Welcome back to another video. Today I'll be fully explaining how Stormfall mechanics work. So all the tech, why this thing works, why that thing works. So just basically every mechanic. This will be helping you understand more about tech. So anything you couldn't do before, maybe because of the explanation, you're able to figure out your own way of doing it. Or you're just curious. So yeah, let's get started. So let's first go over the input priorities. So basically when you input an action, action with a higher priority will overwrite the action you just did. So I'll just go over the orders right now. I'll be going over the action with least priority to the most priority. At the bottom of the list with the least priority is kunai. It won't even come out. Wait, I have to separately press it. There's no way of activating within the combo. Like I'm spamming it right there. We go on to guarding. So it actually activates, but there's a quite a big delay. As you can see, so it can't override anything. And then grab. So a grab happens faster than a guard. So he has to stand still to do the guard, but then just grab. He does it immediately after the last hit. And then we have jumping. It's just a jump cancel for getting out of combos. Most people should know that by now, but there you go. Now moving on to Jutsu or Chaka Kunai. So that happens even faster than a grab. If I input the Jutsu or the Chaka Kunai after the first hit, it will immediately do it after the first hit. If it's the second hit, then it will wait for the second hit animation to finish. But it does it immediately after it finishes. But it still doesn't override the action. Next we have leader switching. Now this overrides whatever was happening before. So no matter what you're doing, if you switch, it will override it. For example, if I ninja move, I switch, overrides. Switch, jump, switch, overrides. So switching basically overrides most actions. If I'm in the middle of a combo, I switch. But this doesn't completely override the action, because if you can see, if I do Hashirama's third hit, the character still keeps going. So it's kind of a half override, but it is still override. And then we have chakra dashing. Chakra dashing basically cancels out everything. Like I can be in the middle of a animation and I can chakra dash. Like the third hit. So no matter what I'm doing, I can chakra dash canceled. Like it really doesn't matter what you're doing. You can like before I even hit him, I'm doing a spark dash. But leader switching and chakra dashing doesn't actually cancel items. As you can see. I have to dash after the item comes out. So am I switching? The item has to come out first before I switch. Like that. If you look at the controller, you can see I'm actually doing the action. Like that. And then moving on to countering. Countering you can do anywhere in the combo, same as shock dashing and leader switching. You can be halfway through an animation, it will still do still do the counter. But this does require you to be on the ground. Countering cancels out items. I can counter whenever I want to throughout the animation. Now the action with the most priority could be debatable, but I'm saying it's subbing. This is because you can sub at any time throughout the combo, no matter what you're doing. No matter what you're doing, you can sub. If you get hit, you can sub, like but even before you get hit. But you can't 
do a sub without getting hit. That's the main like, main problem. And plus, after you counter, you cannot sub. So those are the some debatable things about it. But sub and counter, just, I guess, tied number one. Now moving on to more techie stuff. First off, we have already inputted actions. I'll just call it AIA for short. And it's limit. It's basically all actions inputted by the player will finish unless it's cancelled. So if I do two hits, the two hit will finish. So if I do two hits quick, it'll finish the two hits. If I do three hits, the three hit will finish. If I do two hits and a grab, it'll do two hits and a grab. If I do one hit and a grab, it'll do one hit and a grab. Now obviously this doesn't work with every action. For example, you can't just stroke an after a combo. So you can't really put that in the AIA. So it doesn't work. But if you chakra kunai, chakra shuriken, see, it'll do it after the action. So that's what AIA is. So the already inputted actions will finish before uh, your next action comes in. So like my two hit will finish before the chakra kunai comes out. Yeah, you see? And the limit is how many inputs you can input. For example, for Sasuke, he has six hits in his combo, or six button presses. So if I press six times here, it won't do the whole thing. Because the combo stops at three button presses if you don't hit anything. Now let's try with Hashirama. You can do his full four hits um, in empty, right? Like that. But as you can see, I pressed it four times there, but it only did three hits. Now that is the limit. It's different for each character because Hashirama's animation for his third hit is actually really long. So it's not registering the last hit because the third hit animation has to finish before it does the fourth hit. And since it's so long, it just doesn't register it. Naruto the Last can do five empty hits or button presses. But if I try to input all the five actions in one go, it will only show the first three. So that is another limit for the AIA. But if I keep going, it will do the full five hits. If I just try to do the five hits in one go, the limit is capped at three hits. That shouldn't be too hard to understand. That's AIA. Summary. Depending on the length of the combo or action, the following AA might fail to give an output. Same as Hashirama. Same as like all characters, there is a limit to it. Now moving on to the post leader switch time frame. Again, I'm gonna shorten it and call it the PLS time frame or the PLS. PLS is the specific time frame after a leader switch for the player to input one or many actions that will be outputted by the switched out character. So for example, if I switch and hit, you see, the character I switched out of will do one hit. But the action you input has to be in the PLS time frame. And the time frame isn't very wide. It's less than a second for you to input something. So accordingly, if I do two hits after the switch in the PLS time frame, my character will do two hits. Like that. AIA also applies to this. So in the PLS time frame, however many inputs you can do is however many inputs the character will do. Let's say somehow you can input five actions in PLS time frame, which is basically impossible for a human to do. Naruto still wouldn't do five hits because his AIA limit is at three. Right, so if you somehow manage to do five actions, five inputs in the PLS time frame, once again, not possible, your character will still do his AIA limit. Now, if you manage to do three hits in the PLS time frame, which is also kind of impossible, Sasuke will do three hits because his limit is at three hits. If you manage to input three hits in the PLS time frame, he will do three hits. Same as Naruto. Three hits. Because that's his AA limit. Same as Hashirama. So once again, whatever you input in the PLS time frame will be outputted by character unless you're interfering with the AIA limit. So just keep that in mind for switch tech and stuff. We'll be moving on to switch tech and buffers and all of that stuff later. Now we have held inputs and leader switching. So for example, if I hold the attack button, right, you only do one hit because it's held. It's a continuous input, which doesn't make sense to the game. But if I switch to other hold, the switch will reset the input and make you input it again in the PLS time frame. 
As you can see, I hold, nothing happens. I hold, I switch, he does another hit. So when the held input is interrupted by the switch, it will be inputted again, but in the PLS time frame. Hold, switch, he does his second hit. And that's how you can do a combo switch, instead of doing the switch, two hits, which is very hard. But doable. So this is basically a free double hit with like perfect timing without you needing to time it. This works the same with Chakra. If you Chakra hold and switch, the character you switch out of will have ultimate Chakra. So the stronger version, you know, the this one. So as you can see for a split second before you switched away, he had ultimate Chakra. That's not that useful, but there's a little, you know, observation for you. All right, now moving on to switch tech. This is switch tech without chakra. So switch combo, buffer, grab buffers, and ninja move buffer. I'm gonna explain how these work. Switch combo, as I explained to you, you have hold or attack attack, or you have switch attack attack, which I can't do that well. There you go. These are the ways to do it. And I explained the hold, hold way. Your input get reset, and obviously the switch tap tap that is just pure speed. This is just um, in the PLS time frame, and then you have attack switch attack. Basically, you're attacking, you're switching, and then attacking again in the PLS time frame, which means you get to control the character you just switch out of. That shouldn't be too hard to understand. Now moving on to buffers, you have grab buffer. If you try to grab and switch, just nothing will happen. It will just cancel it out. That's where buffers come in. If you do a hit and then grab and then switch, then your grab will come out like that. This relies on AIA, so already inputted actions. Now these already inputted actions can only be canceled by canceling them. And as you know, switching doesn't actually overwrite or cancel the actions. It just gives you a chance to you know, do something else while the action is still going on. Like that. If I do the third hit, I can walk around while Hashirama still do it, does his animation. So it doesn't override the action, but it gives you like another, like it allows you to play with another character. So this is how buffers work. So a grab and a switch just doesn't work. If you try and grab and switch, it just won't come out. But if you use the AIA mechanic, so one like that, and since you're inputting attack and then grabbing, the character is commanded to finish that combo stream. So attacking and then grabbing. Now when you switch, it doesn't actually overwrite, as I said loads of time before. So it will finish that action. Exactly how um, grab buffers work. Like that. But you do have to make sure you're not blue dashing. Blue dashing does cancel out your AIA but not your normal combo stream. So, blue dash cancels out AIA, but not combo stream. But if you're just doing a, you know, normal grab buffer, it will work. Now you might be thinking, will this work on maybe second hit? Yes, it will. If you do the AIA for the second hit, one, two, grab, like that, but you switch before. One, two, grab, switch. He'll do the grab buffer. So this works on every character. Right, just like that. Should be simple enough to understand. Oh, that was a three hit buffer, which I wasn't supposed to do. It's basically just hitting once and then switch, switch combo. One, switch combo. You're basically adding an extra hit at the beginning of the combo. So that's two hits, but if you add a hit, you obviously do three hits, but back on track with a grab buffer. One, two, grab. Just like that. Now for Hashirama, that actually works really well. If you do the third hit and the AA into grab, it will look like this. He does a grab after his long animation, but it's not very useful because it doesn't really reach them. Unless you get close. Yeah, it doesn't really reach them. So it's not that helpful in the game, but looks cool. Next, we have Ninja Move Buffer. 
Now this is just a series of AIAs and PLS. Not that hard to understand at this point of the video. If somehow you got here and didn't watch the rest of the video, um, this might be confusing. So for one of the methods of doing a ninja move buffer, I'm utilizing the hold mechanic, uh, the PLS and AIA mechanic as well. So I'm holding to get two hits because it's a two hit ninja move buffer. Right, and then when I switch for the two hits, I make him jump, but jump twice. Right, like that. So let me just break this down once more. You hold and do the combo buffer, so that makes you do two hits. But when you're switching, you need to do a ninja move or ninja dash. That, right? So if you combine these two together, you hold the attack button, right? And then you do a ninja a switch, switch ninja dash. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to do this, I have made a tutorial for it. So once again, the hold mechanic with the AIA and the PLS mechanic. Now, this method I'm going to tell you now is different from the one I just showed you. It's like that. So it utilizes the two hits with the ninja, move, ninja dash. Like that. But you can't just rely on AIA for this one. If you do that, it will cancel out the ninja dash. Because ninja dash isn't actually in the AIA, so it's part of the limit. So this is when you have to get creative. You have to mix AIA and PLS. So AIA and PLS together. So basically, you're doing the first half of this combo as an AIA. And then the last part as a PLS. So, you basically just put a switch in between that and you'll do it. It's actually really easy if you think about it. If you slow it down, it's really doable. So yeah, enough about that. If you do want to learn the ninja move buffer, I do have two tutorials on the channel. One for each method. Now, moving straight on to switch tech with chakra. First off, you have switch chakra dashing. It's basically just a simple PLS. You switch, and then in the PLS time frame, you just chakra dash. It's really simple. But then you do also have the choice to load your chakra before the switch, and then jump after you press switch. So the jump is in the PLS time frame. So both ways is fine. Depending on which one you want to use. Switch Jutsu works exactly the same as a switch chakra dash. It's just you know, that or that. Basically, follow the same rules as you do as a chakra dash or a switch chakra dash. Now, buffers with chakra is where it gets interesting. So, as I said before in the video, the AA for Jutsu happens after a combo stream, same as the grab. Like that. So you can do the same as a grab buffer, but just with a jutsu. And look at that. So right now I'm actually using the hold mechanic. So I'm holding the second hit and then loading chakra switch, which resets the hit and then makes me do a jutsu. Right? It might be a lot to understand, but so basically one, two, and then chakra switch, and then the switch obviously resets my input for the attack. And since I'm loaded with chakra, and then the attack happens in the PLS time frame, which makes me do a jutsu with the character I switch out of. Like that. It's really that simple, but it's the concept that matters. Now, since we're already talking about Jutsu and Switch Tech and whatever, I might as well talk about why you don't lose Chakra when you Switch Tech with a Jutsu, Chakra Dash, or anything along those lines. Right, as you can see, my Chakra just fills itself. And now I'm going to tell you why. When you're inputting an action and you have more than one character on the stage, all of those characters have separate Chakra Bars. Right, they all have separate Chakra Bars. So let's say I do a Jutsu now, right? I will use up Chakra because that's how the game works. But when I have another character on the stage, for example, if I do a switch jutsu, 
these two characters have separate chocolate bars. Okay, they have separate chakra bars. If I do a jutsu in the PLS time frame, I will use up the chakra of the character I just switched out of. Since they all have separate chakra bars, I'll be using the chakra of the character I switched out of, and the new character I switched into will have a new chakra bar. But that's only the case when you have more than one character while you're doing the action. So if I do the action and I switch, right? When I inputted the action, I didn't have more than one characters. That's why I didn't have separate chakra bars. But if while I'm inputting, there are two characters, then my chakra bar will renew because I'm switching out of the old chakra bar I used up and going into a new one. I'm not sure if you understood that. If you did, well, well done. You understood the concept, but if you didn't, and you do want to know uh, or understand more, go ask me in the comments and I'll explain to my best ability. So yeah, when more than one character is on the stage, when you're inputting an action, they will have separate chakra bars. Just, you know, get that into your mind. This is why instead of just, you know, not losing any chakra, you actually see the chakra bar refill because you're switching out of the character you use up the chakra from. Okay, enough of that. Moving on to airborne stuff. So first off, I'm going to show you an air tilt. So as you see, I activated the tilt in the air. This only works when your guard gets damaged in the air. This works because tilting gets you out of guard stun. If you're just attacking me, I'm letting go of guard. Right, you saw. He can do three hits while I let go of my guard. Just like that. That's what guard stun is. So it keeps your guard up. It's how long an attack keeps your guard up. But to immediately cancel that guard stun, you can just tilt. Right, by tilting, you'll cancel out the guard stun. Right, you see? I could actually tilt out that. This is why when your guard gets hit in the air, you can actually tilt, which results in an air tilt. It's just the same concept as getting out of guard stun. Guard manipulation isn't what I should be talking about at all because it's just how the game works. It's just, you know. If you get hit at a certain height, like right there, and I get recovery frames, right? So that's nothing techy, but just putting it out there. Now, I doubt that's everything, but that's everything I've looked into so far and understood the mechanics of. Well, hopefully this video has helped you out. Maybe you understand more about the mechanics, you know, maybe some of the tech you wouldn't be able to do before, you can actually do now, all of those stuff. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.